So my name is Stefan Reynason. I'm the general manager of Talat and Gavia. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about our newly delivered uh, Talat and Gavia Sea Raptor AUV. Uh, it's part of our three AUV lines that we have going. So we have the Gavia AUV, which is a 1,000 meter man portable AUV system. We have the Osprey, our 2,000 meter low logistics AUV. It has greater payload and Juris capacity, but it's still a drive back system similar to the Gavia AUV. And then we have the Sea Raptor, a 6,000 meter rated deep survey applications AUV, a flooded design. So here you can see an actual photo from our um, um, factory where we have all three vehicles. And to give you a scale, you have about 2.1 meters long Gavia vehicle at 70 kilograms. You have 2.5 meter long, 125 kilogram Osprey. And then you have the Sea Raptor, seven meter long, 1.6 metric ton. So the Sea Raptor is our deep water survey AUV. It differs from the other two design in that it is a flooded hull design rather than an air vac system with multiple pressure vessels inside the vehicle. It has great payload flexibility um, with standard payloads including multi-beam synthetic aperture sonars, sub-bottom profilers, laser, cameras, etc. But the design of the vehicle is designed to be a modular system which gives you flexibility in your sensor configuration and your battery configuration. So we go just over the few numbers. So length, typically about 6.8 meters, but configuration dependent. Uh, the weight is 1.6 tons, but also configuration dependent. Currently the diameter is 660 millimeters. We have it in two depth ratings, 3,000 meter and 6,000 meters. Our battery modules are about 31 kilowatt standard but these can be uh, expanded with extra uh, battery base. For sensors, we have various sensor options, as I said, including synthetic aperture sonar or side scan, sub bottom profilers, multi-beam sensors, uh, camera, environmental, and customs as well. And the endurance is dependent, obviously, on speed configuration, but we're looking typically in a standard configuration at about 50 hour endurance, but this is expandable with extra battery base. So if we look at the design, you can see that the design is based on the modularity. So you have a front section, the nose, where we have an environmental sensors, recovery float, and an obstacle avoidance multi-beam sonar. In our payload sensor section, we have uh, our payload module that controls the third-party sensors. We have synthetic aperture sonars, the camera, laser, the forward-looking strobe, and then transmittings as well. In the battery sections, we have the two Kraken batteries, including also the sub-bottom uh, arrays and the stern strobe for the cameras as well, which you see here underneath. Uh, then we have a navigation control section, INS and DVL, their main control module, and our multi-beam echo sounder, both the electronics and the transmitters as well. And then the propulsion section that has a main thruster and control fins. So we'll go into details of each of these sections. So we see a cross section here. So we have a uh, Blue Beam Multi Beam 450 gives you about a 100 meter range for obstacle detection and also terrain following algorithm where we can map out the terrain in front of the vehicle. We have an RPI Maestro environmental sensor suite and also whale port depth sound and temperature uh, velocity uh, as well. We have in this configuration a Sonodyne Aftrack 6 modem with the USB on capability and we have a secondary option of a Benthos acoustic modem with a release function to offset any uh, issues to, with drop weights. We have a payload electronics in the bottom and our Kraken sonar electronics on the top. We have a sub button profiler uh, transmitter and we have the transducers on the SAS. In the midsection, we have the strobe electronics for the camera systems and laser. We have the dual Kraken battery modules. We have an INS DVL combination with a um, X Blue Roman 6000 INS coupled with a 300 kilohertz Tasman DVL. Then we have RF Com Tower on the top. We have the Resan Multi Beam Electronics enclosures on top of the AUV of electronics, and then we have the transmitters underneath. In the back section, we have an emergency system of RF beacons and emergency acoustic beacons, as well as the actuator electronics that are inside our control uh, uh, enclosure. And then on the back end, we have actuators and dive plates. And each of these sections can be divided up, and I'm gonna go back here, and we can actually ship the vehicle via air by breaking it apart 
at the midsection and having it shipped in airshipable freights so you can actually ship the vehicle anywhere in the world even though it's over 1.6 tons. Some data sets from our recent factory acceptance testing. So this is a B-24 airplane wreck from World War II that's just outside our office in Iceland. And we also have a shipwreck that we discovered with the Icelandic Coast Guard during one of our testing here. We have fantastic imagery from the recent T-50 multi-beam at 400 kilohertz, really good data set. And we were running the vehicle. And this is just to give you kind of a size overview of the vehicle versus a, a, a large Jeep in the back and a couple of our operators here. So you can see that the vehicle is, is quite large and much uh, <coughs> much larger than most of our other AUVs. Uh, getting it in the water though is not a problem. We both have a center lift point and we have a nose lift point as well through the recovery phase. The vehicle is running in, our, in the um, back of our uh, um, uh, factory in Iceland where we can get access to the water and we are running in the most popular areas in Iceland where you have the brand new spa that is just 500 meters away from our office and you have the one of the best restaurants in Iceland all in the same picture with the AUV as well. Getting the vehicle out of the water you can see that it, it's flushing out the water because it's a water, um, uh, water flooded volume uh, and uh, the year we're recovering it and of course, making sure that everything is, is cleaned up and made sure that it's in good shape. So here you can see the family of AUVs. We have the Gavia, the Osprey, and the, and, the, and the Sea Raptor, and the people that make it happen. So thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, feel free to come to me or any other vehicle sales team that are on the booth here, and uh, we would love to tell you more about it. Thank you. Teledyne Marine, everywhere you look.